shushing. No, uh, sorry, why, uh, why are you here? <laughs> you told me there was a birthday. Hmm, a birthday, a birthday. I can't think of whose birthday it could be. <laughs> yeah, come on in! Happy birthday to the Switch! Look, we got party balloons, we got things dangling from the ceiling. Even if you want to worm your way back here, oh, I'll just get a shot of it later. <laughs> Look, we've got happy birthday around the back here. It's, you know, it's like a Mario themed birthday extravaganza. If you just step back that way a little bit, we've got drinks, but we also have snacks. So, uh, would you like anything, Kim? Would you like a drink or something? Are these his friends? <laughs> that, yeah, that's all. The, that's the birthday boys right there. And girls, birthday boys, you know? But we got, we got some delicious G Fuel on tap. All the G Fuel you could possibly want. We're mixing flavors today, so it's gonna be a little bit of, you know, anything you want. But it's a big day! You need energy for it, you know what I mean? And if you want energy for it, you know, code beat em up to gfuel.com. It's just a little bit of a shameless plug, but, you know, they are doing a uh, whole promotion right now where whoever sells the most G Fuel gets a shaker cup. And I've always wanted a shaker cup because I really love G Fuel, and if you could help support me, I, it, it would actually mean a lot to me. I mean, I did go through the entire effort of hosting this entire party after all. So, that's good. Mmm. Oh. <laughs> Tastes delicious. Uh, do you want a snack? Anyone hungry? Sure. Okay, well, take your little party plate here, Kim. You want to just hold that out in front of the camera there? Some delicious G Fuel Pop Rocks no. for you. <laughs> you can uh, go ahead and, um, a little bit of a fun dip situation. So yeah, anything else or is this it? Nope, just G Fuel code beat em ups, get 30% <laughs> off right now. Help me win the competition. I'd really appreciate it. Look at all the people we have to try and beat. So it is the Switch's birthday, and I wanted I wanted I wanted <laughs> to do something special. So we're gonna take a look back at the Switch and the last five years, but also take a look at this year and the future of the Switch because it's gonna be really exciting and it also was very exciting i have not had nearly enough g fuel but i'm gonna use this camera now so okay bye cool wait hold on a second you didn't you have you didn't, to you didn't do your well you need you need a party or... hat oh, no. here you go there's oh, no. one for you Ow. there's one for you and there's one for me and then you know what we'll put one on the camera and that can be everyone at home yeah there you go you yeah. guys can't sit show the <laughs> shut, shut. <laughs> put it in the camera <laughs> That's what you guys are wearing, so... Hold on, I, I went out of all the effort to get these, and I'm gonna have to clean this later, so... Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Alright, thank you, Kim. I just get it. They pop in your mouth. Alright, cool! <laughs> But in all seriousness, or as, as serious as we can get with a thousand balloons in my room, it is the Switch's five year anniversary. And we've had a ton of fun with this console. And I want to celebrate it. I usually don't do these anniversary milestones, but it's half a decade. I can't believe I've been making videos about this console that long. We're on the hunt to find a Switch, see if anywhere has any actual pre-orders left for the Switch. We did it, buddy. Yeah. Switch with Breath of the Wild. We did it. We did it, everyone. Switch. Also, in all seriousness, I wasn't kidding about the G Fuel thing. It's like a whole tournament. There's brackouts and knockouts. Brackouts. And G Fuel is delicious. Zero calories, zero sugar, energy. I mean, I got three cans right here. It'll get me through the next week. So if you've appreciated the five years of content I've given you for free. Just saying, there's a link below. I really want to appreciate and celebrate Nintendo and the Switch today, and the joy that that console and its games have given all of us. But it's a little hard for me to walk down memory lane without also looking at my content and what we did with the Switch early on. Nobody thought, well, I did, but nobody else seemed to think the Switch was going to be all that successful. And looking at it now, that is insane. Hi guys, how is everyone? To pick up my Nintendo Switch and Zelda, and most likely that is it. The Nintendo Switch launched March 3rd, 2017. 
with one of the strongest launches I think a console has had. I mean, it released with a new Zelda, but not just a Zelda, Breath of the Wild, which since has become a pinnacle of open world gaming experiences and many games open world or not that have released since then have been measured up to that masterpiece. But on top of that, we also had Super Bomberman, which well, it was there. I am set sooner. One, two, switch. I can't believe that's still $60. Launch day was strong, but honestly, it didn't take long for a plethora of quality games to start releasing on the console. In 2017 alone, we had Super Mario Odyssey, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Splatoon 2, Xenoblade 2, ARMS, 1, 2, Switch, Snip Eclipse, Fire Emblem Warriors, Mario and Rabbids, Pokemon Tournament, Golf Story, Hollow Knight and Stardew. Those two games alone, I feel like the Switch helped make them the success that they are. Steam World Dig 2, we got a Minecraft Switch edition. Overcook is still a staple of the console. Wargroove, Enter the Gungeon. It was clear in that first year that not only were first party exclusive games hopping on Nintendo's new hybrid handheld console, but indies also had a ton of opportunity to hit the system and blow up. I saw a statistic that Steam World Dig 2 sold 10 times more on Switch than it did on Steam. The indie scene not only was very successful on the Switch, but I believe it's what helped the Switch be so successful early on. There are so many great games on the Nintendo eShop right now that don't have physical releases and downloading them digitally it's the only way that you can play them. It, there was a bunch of other random games that released on the Switch in that first year. And it's funny looking back how fondly I remember those experiences because you got to remember, I know it's weird to say this, like we don't remember five years ago, but handheld gaming before the Switch was the 3DS. And then before that, Game Boys. It wasn't exactly the technological pinnacle of gaming at the time. Don't get me wrong, there were fun experiences, but they kind of looked like this. All of a sudden, we were able to play these games on the go. It was a huge step up. So even though a lot of these games, if they release now, you probably wouldn't think much of them, but playing Fast RMX on the Switch's launch in 60 FPS was crazy. Games like Mighty Gun Vault, Snake Pass, Binding of Isaac, Wonder Boy, Blaster Master Zero, Puyo Puyo Tetris were all games that are burned into my brain of memories of playing them at home on the TV, on the tablet, on the bus, when I was going around Canada exploring because I lived there when I got a Switch. I bought my first Switch is Canadian. Maybe that's why he's so apologetic about his Joy-Con drift. <laughs> so I just put $45 of my own money down. I put it on the line. I bought a game that I know is going to suck. I essentially just wasted $45. And of course, you had your terrible games. When we started to realize that while the Switch is cool and it can do a lot we've never seen before, it has its limits. And it was interesting in that first year discovering the limits because, you know, we didn't really know where the ceiling was at the time. Breath of the Wild was crazy. But then we had something like WWE 2K18, where you couldn't have more than two wrestlers in the ring at the same time or else the game would chunk down to 5 FPS. And very quickly, a lot of publishers that planned games for the Switch started to think, maybe this isn't a good idea. Steep was supposed to come out in 2017. That never happened. Can we take a second? to look at these trees. If I take two steps forward, they change. Look at these shadows. They're loading in and out right in front of my face. But it's funny how much those games, again, I remember them because there wasn't the thousands of games that there are now. The first year was strong and we had some great titles, but it wasn't until a year or two later, it started exploding. And I do want to look at this year as we get into the video, because it's funny, while we've had some great years since, and I would argue some years that are comparable, this year on Switch is already set to be the best that we've ever seen. But before we get to 2022, I want to look at some videos that I made and the experiences that I, and I think it reflects the experiences that you and we had early on with the console, if you were an early adopter. Hold on a second, I'm thirsty. It's got to... Get my jug of G Fuel. There's three different flavors in here. I don't recommend mixing three G Fuels, by the way. Or we should put a disclaimer there. <laughs> Recently with the NX being, really, being revealed and 
the Nintendo Switch and everything that's going on with that. I had a lot of people going back and watching my Is the Wii U Still Worth It video and leaving a lot of comments like, do you think it's still worth buying the Wii U with the NX or the Switch not being backwards compatible? So I went through and grabbed a few videos of the uh, in the history of beat-em-ups and should you buy a Nintendo Switch or Wii U? five years ago that's the first video on my channel i could find with the word switch in it i think this was my first switch video and i mean again the nx it's just recently been announced i don't know what they have planned for the system i don't know if the system's going to be terrible the concept and the possibilities and nintendo being nintendo it's gonna be fine. It's gonna it's gonna be a good system with a lot of good quality titles. It's funny looking back at this now. I'm trying to convince people the Switch is going to be fine. Like after the Wii U, uh, the thing I always tried to nail home was yeah, the Wii U failed. But even if you got even if you bought one right at the end of its life, you would still have as many exclusive games to buy and play quality titles to play as any other console. Like, it doesn't matter that no one else bought it. If you buy it, you'll have fun with it. There's more than enough to play on it. The hybrid nature of the Switch is what I initially always saw as the obvious, this is going to explode. This system is not gonna be the Wii U, mark my word. If in like five years from now, this system is the next Wii U and you wanna go back to this video, clip it and then take it and put it somewhere online and say, Woodhawker has no credibility, but I don't feel like I'm gonna be wrong this time. I knew it was gonna be good. I knew, I just knew in my heart of hearts. I'll be honest, I, I, if you had, I had no idea it would be this successful. Like it really has, but it's a major, major success. One of the best selling consoles of all time. I wouldn't have guessed that after the Wii U, but I knew it was going to be way better than the Wii U. <laughs> In the last nine months since release, they have sold 10 million Switch units. So I live streamed waiting at EB Games on the day, an hour and 15 minute stream. I mean, back then, there wasn't that many people watching. I doubt there were more than 50 people in chat. But I, you know, I went, I got the Switch. It was not a super exciting video. I tried really hard to hide my credit card and everything at checkout. So the phone was at a weird angle. It's kind of horrible to watch back because other than the fact that you're literally there for it, you don't see anything. Okay, so we're all done? Yes. All right. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you. Have Enjoy. a nice day. Bye. Hey. Love your channel. Thank you. I How are you? Ups all the time, What's your man? name? Zane. Nice to meet you, Zane. You as I appreciate well. it. Very switch, man. I am. I'm gonna run home now. Right. And it's funny to think that that was five years ago today, and how much my life has changed since then, and the fact that the switch has been everywhere with me. I mean. I'm married now. I'm in Texas now. I went to Japan with my Switch. I took my Switch back home to Australia and I played my Switch with my high school friends who you always used to play games with growing up. My Switch has honestly been by my side every night I go to bed because I take it to bed just in case I want to play something before I go to sleep. And I don't always do, but it's just a routine now that if I'm going to bed, I grab my Switch. And I've done that for five years years there are a few things that nintendo probably could have done better here's a random video i found five things i would switch about the switch i would switch the battery life on the on the tablet apparently you can run zelda for about three hours on it so what i wanted to watch this video for is i couldn't remember the five things i wanted to change and it looks like the first one was i wanted a better battery you're welcome let's see what number two is <laughs> but i don't like the name the name <laughs> What? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Wood. You don't like the name? It's not a bad name, and it makes sense with the whole theme of the console, which is switching the controllers all the time. Let us change that right away for you, Wood. Let us change it right away. There's no way it's going to be a success with the name Switch. Not a chance. I don't think anyone's going to catch on to that. Now, you and I both know when this system came out, I went a little overboard making videos about the Switch and not the video games, the Switch. I made way too many videos about the actual Switch. So how about I make one about the games? Okay, so this is really where it all began. I started covering Switch things early. As you've seen, you know, I was talking about things I would change, things that I want. But it was when I made five Nintendo Switch games that are worth the price and five that are not, when everything started to take 
off. When you go back and watch some of these videos that I'm talking about today, they might have 10, 20, 30,000 views now because people have gone back and watched them. You gotta remember at the time, they weren't getting that many views. I was a very small channel, but this was the one. It blew up and there's a lot of reasons. It immediately did pretty well, not a million views, but pretty well. It was just at about six months into the Switch, people started to look at the console and see, oh, there's a new Zelda, there's a new Mario Odyssey, there's, you know, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. There's some things going on here, but what else is there? What games are worth buying? And again, nobody was really talking about the Switch back then. People still didn't think it was going to be a success. So when people went to YouTube and searched what Nintendo Switch games are worth buying, there was like two or three of us making videos about it at the time. And mine was one of the only ones. People had nowhere else to go. I was it for the longest time. I mean, one of a few, but you know what I mean. There was also a video called Metroid Prime 4 coming in four months. <laughs> maybe, maybe Bandai almost has this thing finished and we can expect to see it between spring to summer 2018. I didn't even, I didn't even watch that one. I, man, we've been on a wild ride with that one, Nintendo. All right, we could talk about 2018, 19, 20, and even 2021, but I don't really want to have a five hour long video. I thought it would just be fun to look at the Switch's release and then look at its fifth year. It's actually kind of freaky when you look at it and you think about it, because this year is almost like a repeat of 2017, but even better. We already had Pokemon Arceus, which I think is one of the greatest games on Switch and so much fun. And jumping ahead to the end of the list, we just got two new Pokemon games, Scarlet and Violet announced for the end of the year. Just Let's just throw Breath of the Wild 2 in there immediately. And it is funny looking at the first year, Breath of the Wild, fifth year, Breath of the Wild 2. Keep that in mind as we go along. We're also getting a brand new Kirby game. And I don't know if we're getting a Mario Odyssey or a, a sequel to that. I think it's coming. My theory is it's going to launch with whatever Nintendo does next. But I think it's funny that the new Kirby looks a lot like Mario Odyssey. <laughs> which was also released in 2017. We're getting Splatoon 3. Is the writing on the wall for that one? Splatoon 2 in 2017. Mario and Rabbids 2. Mario and Rabbids 1 was 2017. Xenoblade 3. Xenoblade 2 <laughs> was also 2017. You, know, you see, it's weird. It's a weird year, but it doesn't end there. Fire Emblem Warriors 3 Hopes is releasing this year, and we also had a Fire Emblem Warriors in 2017. On top of that, Nintendo Switch Sports, which is just cool. I mean, you could compare it with 1-2 Switch, but why would you? It's just, this is just better. Also, while we're on sports games, we're getting a new Mario Strikers, which is just incredible on its own. Golf Story, a cute little indie that took the world by storm and still a Switch exclusive released 2017 and was supposed to get its sequel as well. So even the indies are coming out and repeating the last five years with Sports Story in 2022. On top of that, that Sonic Frontiers game is supposed to release. I think, my God, I sound like a broken record, but I think that Sonic Forces game was 2017. Advance Wars 1 and 2 is getting a reboot. Triangle Strategy. I know Octopath was, I think, 2019, but it's still an incredible game to be getting in the middle of everything else this year. You can even look at the new Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC tracks. I mean, the game released in 2017, and for some reason now in 2022, we're getting a bunch of new content for it. And then if we do finally get Silk Song like this year like we're supposed to we also got hollow knight in the first year 2022 is a repeat of 2027 but like souped up to 11. i think there's too many games even i don't know how some of these games are going to survive being released crammed in between other releases it'll definitely be the best year the switch has ever seen i mean just judging by that lineup we know this already either way i don't see anything ever competing with this i mean look at that this is insane. You know, I planned out pretty much this entire video up until now, and I'm now realizing that I don't really have a way to end it. I get pretty emotional when I think about the Switch and the last five years because, I mean, the Switch changed my life. You know, it really did. Nintendo and all the content that I've made 
how it's intertwined with my life. It's my favorite console of all time. It really is. Nintendo's history and lineage all wrapped up in a one. I remember when the Switch was revealed, they did a whole montage of like, we've taken this from the NES and this from the 64 and this from the Wii and it's all led up to this moment. And honestly, it really did all lead up to that moment for Nintendo. I had this thought the other day, but Nintendo always did the handheld and the home console. They did both independently. And then as soon as technology met a point where they could combine both and they could have that competitive edge also tied up in a hybrid console where they could have their portable and their home all in one and stay competitive, they did it. As soon as they could, they did it. Cause it just, it just screams Nintendo. So thank you, Nintendo and the Switch for the last five years. Thank you to all of you for watching my content for the last five years. And whatever the future does look like for both Nintendo and my content, I'm excited to experience all of it with you and just in general. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. You should have seen, you should have seen the guy's face when I was buying all these balloons. You should have seen how insane I looked when I was coming out of Party City. I don't look that crazy, do I?